Now this fantastic bridge is featured in quite a lot of my videos now and I do love it but when it was built in 1961 it replaced another bridge a transporter bridge which you can see used to stand right here so the Widnes Runcorn transporter bridge was the first transporter bridge ever built in the UK but get this it was the largest of its type ever built in the world and before it was built in 1905 the only way of crossing this tiny yet very busy bit of water was on foot on the railway bridge just up there or by ferry boat. Inevitably the poor ferry couldn't keep up with demand and so they needed a bridge. But because both the River Mersey and the Manchester Ship Canal had lots of tall vessels going up and down all day, the bridge would need to be cleverly designed to accommodate them passing underneath. If you look closely at this map you'll notice it's actually two different maps stitched together, both created several years apart. And what's interesting is that the new bridge, just visible on the top map, actually follows the line of the old ferry crossing, exactly. As industry continued to grow and then the number of cars on Britain's roads shot up, the transporter bridge here was no longer fit for purpose. Plus, by the 1960s, it was getting old and needing repair frequently. And so, they built that one, and not this one, down. This fantastic photo was taken at a time after the new road bridge was open, but before the transporter bridge was dismantled. And you can see the difference in scale and in structure. And the big approaches to the bridge are still here in place. This one in Witness, and over there on the other side in Runcorn. This one here in fact has got this lovely little building here, now this is the old powerhouse where the engine was which drove the mechanism for the bridge. And it's such a big shame that this bridge isn't here anymore, not least because very few transporter bridges were actually built in the first place and even fewer of them still exist today anywhere in the world. But as luck would have it, there is one more we can actually see and it's not too far away. getting there now look at this you see that over there in the distance amazing and we can see more evidence here these old rail lines in the ground here crossing the little road heading that way towards the bridge just over here in the trees there's a little something something obviously some sort of structure I don't know it's very difficult to make out um, but I'd say definitely related to the rail line going over towards the river. Right, I'm down technically by the riverside, it's just over there beyond that giant hogweed. But you can see the road bridge there, now that road bridge is obviously a lot more modern than the transport bridge which we're about to see, but it does play its part and that'll pop up later on in the story. Um, but for now, <laughs> I'm gonna Indiana Jones it this way and uh, yeah, hopefully pop out near the bridge. Right, look at this. I stood right next to the bridge. It's huge, it's beautiful, look at it. And this is actually a footpath, so I'm not technically being a naughty boy by being here, this is all right. There it is, beautiful. Right, so that's where I was stood before the very end where them trees are in the distance, where the rail lines were. And you can see them coming through that car park a little bit there, and then they disappear, and then suddenly bang, they're back here on the ground. These old lines, they would have gone straight across there. And this little space here, this port here, between the two legs, would be where that 
um, the lifting mechanism, the, the transporting bit uh, would have sat right here um, and the carriages would have been loaded onto there using the rails and then it would have moved across. It's fantastic, look at it. <laughs> Yes, this is Warrington Transporter Bridge, an iconic structure which served as a vital river crossing here for decades. And today is a rare symbol of Britain's industrial heritage. The idea of constructing a transporter bridge in Warrington originated in the late 19th century as the town experienced significant industrial growth. The need for a reliable and efficient crossing over the River Mersey became apparent to facilitate transportation of goods and people between the two sides. Construction of the Warrington Transporter Bridge began in 1913, with the design and engineering expertise of William Henry Hunter and William Arrell & Co, the company behind such iconic bridges as the Forth Bridge and Tower Bridge. The bridge was completed and officially opened on the 29th of June 1916, but why this? What is a transporter bridge and why was it even needed when there were so many other alternatives for crossing things? The concept of a transporter bridge was invented by Charles Smith in 1873 in the busy port town of Hartlepool in the northeast as a method of crossing the wide mouth of the River Tees. Smith's idea was rejected by both Hartlepool and Middlesbrough and even Glasgow the first one ever built, in fact, was in Spain some years later, and then France, which went a bit nuts for them. They were a great way of crossing a point without the need for a long ramp up and down at either end, where such a thing might not be physically possible. Here in Warrington, the gondola was suspended from the tower via steel cables, and was operated by an electric motor, allowing it to move back and forth. So it's 103 metres long and 28 metres tall. And it was built here in particular because of the chemical and soap works which were built on either sides of the River Mersey here. You can see on this map that the bridge carries a thick black line, i.e. a rail line. That's because it was designed originally to carry rail vehicles up to 18 tonnes. It was adapted later for road traffic in the 1940s and then strengthened to carry up to 30 tonnes. And amazingly, this one is the second one to be built on the site. This one was built in 1905, not long after the one at Runcorn Gap. This first bridge was a little bit flimsy and subsequently demolished after the second one was built. Right, so add this to the list of dumb things I've ever done. Um, I've tried to come out onto, well, here, to um, get a more central shot of the bridge. And I'm quite high up, probably about 10 foot above the mud and the river and the reeds. And uh, yeah, not the smartest thing I've done, but you can see down here, there's a little sluice gate, which presumably would let the river water out um, if needs be, and possibly into one of the the chemical works or the soap works, which would be on this side. Um, also to note, this bank looks a lot lower than the other bank from here, and you can tell that if I take a shot of the other side, um, you can see that bank, the river bank, looks a lot higher than this side, which is quite interesting. There's just something about a, a complicated iron structure which rises high into the sky, which is just fascinating. And I don't know why, because it's rusty and it's old looking, but it's also beautiful. It's like the Eiffel Tower. It's like Warrington's Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Now from close up it looks big, but it's only when you step away and you get some distance that you realise just how big it actually is. That's quite an undertaking. And as you can tell, this entire part of the River Mersey is still surrounded by industry. This is a silicate plant over here. And there's other bits going on. And there's something else over there. It's still very, very industrial. I'm not even actually sure I'm supposed to be stood where I'm stood at the moment. But from this distance you can see just how big the transporter bridge is. 
So why did it fall out of use? Well, over time, innovation in transport technology meant that road vehicles were just getting heavier and heavier and the bridge just couldn't keep up. Plus it needed a lot of maintenance and upgrading. And in the end, it was just easier to build the old road bridge further down, which we saw earlier. Secondly, the construction of a more common road bridge nearby was possible only as traffic on the river became less and less frequent. And that allowed vehicles to get to the siltworks without stopping. Now, despite efforts to preserve the bridge, including campaigns by local residents and enthusiasts, the Warrington Transporter Bridge faced closure. In 1964, after almost five decades of service, the bridge made its final crossing. It was no longer deemed economically viable and was instead deemed surplus to requirements. Following its closure, the Warrington Transporter Bridge became a protected heritage structure, recognised for its historical and architectural significance. Efforts were made to preserve and maintain the bridge as a monument to the town's industrial past. It stands today as a Grade 2 listed structure, attracting visitors who appreciate its unique design and its representation of a bygone era. Now, in recent years, plans have emerged to revitalise the, the transporter bridge and potentially restore it to operational use. Now, proposals for its renovation and reopening have been discussed with the aim of preserving its heritage while creating a functional and sustainable river crossing. So for now, this amazing bridge remains an enduring symbol of Warrington's industrial heritage and a powerful reminder of the town's historical significance. And its iconic presence serves as a testament to the engineering achievements of the past and continues to capture the imagination of locals and visitors alike.